Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and what I am going to call number video number four for the SolidWorks thing, maybe number three, I don't know, I forget, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, so anyways, the last video I believe we left off on making a spinner and the cow flap revolve for the XP56. Um, since then, some really good documentation has come in from a gentleman that I could not pass up in exchange for designing him a slightly larger version than what I had originally planned. And honestly, it takes just a little bit more time to do it this way than how I was originally showing you to do it. But the outcome is significantly better. So part of the documentation he sent me was this photo here on the picture. This is an original Northrop drawing that shows their what they call a crude nacelle or a, what most people would consider the fuselage excuse me and what you see is you see all the stations for the for this particular portion of the airframe here we have station zero at the very nose and then station 283 here towards the back and that shows you the crew reference the crew nacelle reference reference line here which runs right down but we'll say is the propeller shaft or the thrust line of the nacelle then it shows you a few other things here's the uh the mold line diaphragm right here at the front that's probably a hatch that comes off the upper face of the cockpit floor under that would of course be the nose wheel side view of it and then a top view and also a top view of the the, the cockpit area that sticks out so there was that one he sent and then there was also this photo here, which when you first look at it is just a whole bunch of numbers and a little bitty diagram. Um, but this is showing it's actually showing you dimensions for the upper portion of each fuselage station. So for station zero, you see it's just zero because there's nothing there. That's the very tip of the nose. Station five, which would be five inches behind this nose, you have a radius of 8.5 inches. And then from the bottom of that, which is this ellipse here, it's 8.68 inches. So basically what this works out of this 8.55 inches is a radius from the crew reference center line and the actual vertical center line. And that gives you a perfect circle. And here in the note section, it's kind of hard to see, but it says sections above the reference planes are full circles, sections below the reference plane, which is this crew reference, crew nacelle reference plane, are true ellipses. Semi minor axes of ellipses equals the R. So here we go. Semi major axes of ellipses equal A. So this is the vertical dimension for, that the bottom of the ellipse is for the crew reference plane. Then this is a good one here. The nose. It says 8.80 spherical radius at nose. This is important to keep them. Keep a reminder of once we go to start drawing the fuselage. And here we have a 1.45 spherical radius at the spinner tip. Again, another one to kind of keep keep in mind. So I got that one, which does great for the top. But the, here there were in total, I believe, five of these sheets. And these are all of the coordinates for those ellipses below the crew reference or the crew nacelle reference line. So basically that previous sheet and this sheet along with four additional ones will give you the exact outside contour of every cross section or every station location that is on this original drawing here so everywhere you see a station line here we have a full cross section for and what we don't have cross sections for we actually are given information like here at the tip of the cell is that 1.45 inch spherical radius and up here to nose is just an 8.8 .8 inch spherical radius so with this information we can actually come up with what we need to draw the airplane fuselage completely in SOLIDWORKS. So first thing you would do typically is I would draw the box and you would import your three views. But within this information, we don't need the three views. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to start with the station photo and you are going to come through here. And I've skipped way ahead because this is a new learning experience for me. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come in and you're going to draw a side view 
and you are going to put every single one of these stations in. So you'll know where they go. And all I did, just modify that sketch. You'll see everything is a center line. And they're all dimensioned to those station location numbers. And then here you'll see there's a few new ones that we don't have here in the spinner area. And then there's a couple up here in the nose as well, like 5, 10, 15. Those aren't here, but where they are shown is right here, stations 5, 10, and 15. So there's not actually a bulkhead here, but there is a cross section to give you the shape of the fuselage. So with all that done, we've got all of these lines here. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to start putting in new planes. So here, front plane, I renamed it Station Zero because the front plane of this instance will be Station Zero. Then when I wanted to add a new plane, I came up to Reference Geometry, then down to Plane, and then at the little drop-down arrow here beside whatever our file name is, you click that, you click your front plane, and you want this to be parallel to that. And then you click your line. And what that does is it draws you a new plane. And since I've already done this, you'll see the Station 5 plane is already here. It'll Once you get to that point, you click OK. And then you'll come here and you'll just double-click and rename your station. And what you'll do is you'll come through and you'll do that for every single one of those stations. Let's, uh, well, we'll leave it there. So once all your stations are in there, then you have to go through and do your curves. Here you can see I've already got the fuselage curves drawn in. When it comes to the fuselage curves, the easiest way to do it is to just make a Excel file in this instance using your dimensional drawings. In this case, I'm using these station dimensions. Not this one, but actually you want to use this one. You're doing X and your Ys. So it gives you an X point and then a Y point. And then SolidWorks, since it works in three dimensions, you have to add find the right one again you have to add a z which in this case z would be here and it's just all zeros beside it so once you have your spreadsheet made up in this case you have x y and then you have z which would be all zeros you can save this as a tab delimited text file it has to be a text file when you get your text file if you did it right it will look either like that one or it will look like it'll look more likely like this one. You have your X, your Y, and your Z. With all that information done, what you can do is then you can come come over here to your station five. And features, you can come to curves, do curves through XYZ point. You can browse for your files. You come to text file, you click, hey, I want station five. Station five. And here what you see is it draws the curve based on those X, Y, and Z points. When you're done, you hit OK. In this case, I've already got it done, so I'll just show it, and then it draws your curve. Now, you're probably thinking, why is the curve drawn over here, but all my stuff is over here? Well, what happens when I went to, well, your X and your Y are first positive, so it goes positive and then positive. These are all negative and then negatives. And in order to fix that, what I did is you'll come to station five, you'll do sketch, sketch again, you'll come to this feature called convert entities, do that, click on your curve, and you'll then click to check OK. And you see it draws this bold black line for your curve. Then, since we want to move it over so it's all on the one side of the plane, and everything is top is top and bottom is the bottom. You come to tools, sketch tools, rotate. Click your curve. At this point, come over to click center of a rotation. Click here the origin point. 
and then we're going to type in, you see it automatically moves over here to how many degrees you want. We'll type 180, click enter, enter again, and then we draw, we have our curve moved. Then for the top part of our curve here, come, we'll draw a line up to the top somewhere, make sure it's vertical, hit the escape button or double click to get rid of that one. We'll come to our three point arc, go click there, click there, draw your curve, come to our documentation, which will be this one. This is station five. So we need an arc of 8.55 inches right here. Come back, solid dimension, or I'm sorry, smart dimension. Click it, 8.55. Hit escape to get out of the smart dimension option. Our little plus sign right here. Click that, hold control, and then click the line. Now they're both highlighted, and you see now we have properties and we have some relations that we can add. We want to make these coincide it. So they're there. And then, as you'll notice, when it did that, our curve moved. So we want to undo it, come to your original curve, click that, make that fix at first. That way, this curve will no longer move. It is fixed on that building space. Then we'll come back to our little plus and our line here. I'm sorry, we're going to come to this plus and our origin point, and we're going to make those coincide it. And now it's going to sit there and be difficult with me. And that's because this one here, let's delete that one real quick. Nope, that didn't work either. There, see, for some, sometimes it just doesn't like to play. <laughs> <laughs> Click that our origin point. There we go. And that there is our station five cross section. For me, I've already done all of these cross sections. So I'm going to hide that. All of that can get deleted because we don't need it. I already have it. I'm just going to exit that sketch and the sketch is going to disappear. So once you've got all of that done, now you have all your fuselage stuff. I'm going to turn off this station sketch just come over here right click it do the little eyeball with a line through it and that'll hide that and now what you end up with are all of your stations for the fuselage so the next thing you got to do is we have one difference here i will just have that on you just notice that between station five and station zero we don't have anything there but we do have, according to this note down here, a semi, I'm sorry, a 8.8 .8 spherical radius at the nose. I know that's pretty hard to see. So what you got to do is you got to come down here to this case. I've already done the work. Sketch 33 in my instance is the nose bowl revolve. So what you do for this is you can come down you can do a three-point arc to these two points here and then your third point just do that and then we'll off skew it a little bit at this point here and this curve we want to be coincided again click the point click the line but while holding control and do coincide it see how this will move so click the point click that point again while holding control and then coincide it. And then that gives us that. And then this one will be just for construction. So you can click it, come to construction, or you can right click it after you highlight it. And then you have this little solid to dash thing and that one's coincide it. And then again, you do the same thing. You want to make a three point curve between the top point of station five, the bottom point of station five, and then or the origin point, in which case is also station zero. So you see, I just came out here and made the curve. We'll highlight the curve. We'll highlight our origin point and say, hey, go inside it, please. And you see there's a little bit of a difference there. I did this a couple of different ways, and either way really works. It's just it's all going to be balsa wood at the end, so you're, <laughs> this is much more accurate than most carving will be. And then the, all I did is I just drew another arc, another circle in this instance, out here, came to smart dimension. I needed it to be just a single curve, 
So it came with a line, vertical, to top to bottom, did that. Trim entities made it half of a circle, back to smart dimensions. And now I want it 8.8. .8. This original arc can become a construction geometry. And then I brought this to here, made it coincide it. And now you see, hey, okay, where this line here, that is totally moving what I did not want to happen. Now you can just draw a vertical line to where the 8.8 .8 and everything kind of worked. But I don't need any of this information. Tell you what. Let me delete all of that. Let's do it the easy way, the back button. I know I'm kind of just going over this particular area very quickly. Don't worry about it too much because there will be plenty of instances here soon where you'll see this more in, in depth but then here with this profile drawn i just did a revolved boss, boss or base and what ends up happening is you end up with uh don't mind that i can i know what i did wrong get rid of that we'll be good there we go i did the revolved boss base and then you can see it kind of comes up with a half circle half like a bowl looking shape okay so we have all of our outlines we now have a nose bowl and you can see there's actually a new station station five is here this station is kind of canted this is what i will call station sketch in this case it's sketch 33 but it's actually the back side of that 8.8 .8 inch spherical nose cone to do to make the fuselage uh it, for some reason my capture software stops at 25 minutes so hopefully this doesn't go much further than 25 minutes so next thing you do is you come up here on your right plane you sketch that and then you just come across with splines in this instance everywhere there's a bulkhead you want a spline point so you just Draw a spline. It doesn't have to be perfect now. You just want to get the correct number of spline points. You're going to do this for the top and the bottom of the profile of this fuselage. So once you get all the spline points there, once you get to the end, just hit escape. It gets rid of the marker. And then down here, you're just going to make a lot of relations. So click a point, hold control, click this point here, come to coincide it. Click the next point. The next bulkhead point while holding control, coincide it. Click a point, control, click another point, coincide it. And you're going to go the whole way down the top, the bottom. Then, once you get all those done, what you'll end up with is this sketch here. Now, you see from the side, this is the top outline, there's the bottom outline. Then again, you want to do the exact same thing. Come to your top plane, sketch it, bunch of splines, spline point, spline point, just draw, start drawing your spline point. Once you get all that done, if I can now find that sketch, here we go. You'll end up with this drawing here. Now we have your top view. So now you're beginning to see a wire frame of what the fuselage would work with or what would look like once it has been converted into a solid. So that's a quick little overview of how I got to the point of being able to make a solid fuselage. I forgot to stop my timer, so I'm no, no idea how long this video has been going. So we're going to make this a short one. Next video, we'll actually come in here and we'll loft this fuselage to make it a solid. And then I'll show you some more stuff about making the actual, excuse me, cockpit bulge on the top and then the ventral fins and things on the bottom. So for now, we'll see you next time.